guys, welcome back to Home Theater Gurus. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at something many DSP sent us, and especially for you audiophile guys, I think this is really gonna be something you wanna see. So as many of you know, episode seven that deals with multiple sub alignment, you know, helping guys get their subs aligned using a mini DSP and a U-mic, one measurement microphone. That video's got a lot of attention. It's done really, really well. So I reached out to mini DSP. I said, hey, you know, I made this video. I'd really like to get my hands on your new flex for the new room here. I'd do a video of it. So they were, seemed to be pretty excited about it and sent it to me. So I got this in the first batch of the flex units that went out. So uh, we're gonna open it up, but we're also gonna talk about it. I did a little more than just an unboxing. I didn't wanna do just an unboxing. Actually, I've already hooked it up to my system and used it a little bit just to find out how it works. So we're gonna unbox it, we're gonna plug it in, we're gonna look at it. It's really, really nice, and I think a lot of guys are gonna be excited about this one. So let's go ahead and take it out of the box. All right, so like I said, I've already opened this, taken it out, used it, and I put it all back, so it's not gonna be exactly like it was when I got it from any DSP. But here we have our USB uh, cable. Now this is what we're gonna use to talk to the Flex, you know, with our computer to set it up. And that's really where the magic is and the things you can do with this Flex, you know, so that's, this is how we're gonna talk to it. So you've got a bunch of different plug-in attachments, you know, for your, your transformer here. It's 12 volt DC transformer to power the mini DSP. On some of the lower versions, you actually have to buy this. This comes with it. And it's got, you know, different countries have different types of plugs. You know, you just snap the one you need. So I've got just a standard 110, you know, US plug that I stuck in there. So that is our power. Okay, and here's our Bluetooth antenna. So we need to put that on the back of it. And that's how we're going to make our Bluetooth work. All right. Like I said, I've already ripped this up because it was a little bit neater than that when they had uh, packaged it. So here it is, the Mini DSP Flex. As you may not be able to tell, but the first thing I noticed was it's bigger than the old 2x4s. You know, I've had all of them, the 2x4 uh, standard, the 2x4 HD, the 2x4, uh, which actually I have that one right over here, the 2x4 Balanced. The Balanced is about the same size as the HD is. So for size comparison, you know, this is about the size of the standard 2x4. So you can see that the Flex is definitely a good bit bigger. And it, it's also made to be seen. You know, you can put this next to your receiver or under your TV or something like that and actually see it. We're gonna look at the display. It's got a really nice display on it and you can control everything from the knob. But actually there is a remote control. Did I forget to package that back up? I think I did. All right, I'm back. I had to go find it actually after I got done playing with it this morning. I forgot to put the, uh, the remote back in the box. So you got this nice little remote and it actually works the unit. You know, once you're streaming something, this remote does it all. Skip, play, pause, you know, go to the next track. Uh, you can go through your presets. You can have different, you know, from subwoofer presets. You can actually change crossovers. There's lots of stuff you can do on these presets. You can switch between them on the fly. It's uh, it's got die rack. You know, you can get die rack on this unit. You can turn it on and off from the remote. So the remote actually works really well. And at first I thought it was an RF remote because I was able to, uh, to point it different directions and it would still work. But it is IR, it's just got a really, really good signal. Okay, now I have the balanced two by four because I'm using an a ABM 70 that has balanced outputs and everything. So I mean, for me, it made sense to get the balance, but you don't have to have a balance. Uh, there's three different versions of this. Of course, this is the balance, then there's the standard with all RCA, and then there's the Flex Digital. And here's a picture kind of what the back of it looks like right here. So you've got some digital outputs as well. All right, so on the back, we've got a ground, and right underneath that, we have our power. And then we've got our audio control. Then we have our USB port. That's how we're gonna communicate with it. And then we have some inputs right here. We've got two digital inputs. We've got our toss link, which is, you know, if you remember back before HDMI, this is how we got Dolby Digital to our receivers and stuff by either one of these ports. You had the digital coax, which is the top one with orange. So you can put those two digital inputs in right there. And then we've got our analog inputs and outputs. And this is what we're gonna use for like our subwoofers. You know, we'll have one input and we can have up to su four subs coming out. 
Now we're gonna talk about what makes this really special and why I think the two channel guys are really gonna like it. It's high resolution Bluetooth. It has LDAC, which was invented by Sony, and it also has aptX. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but so it's got those two versions of high resolution Bluetooth. So for the two channel purist guys, you know, this is going to open that world up for you. You're not stuck with just low resolution Bluetooth that, you know, some of the uh, audiophile guys may feel as inferior or you know feel it sucks so you have a lot of options i mean it pretty much can do it everything i think that's why they probably call it the flex because it's so flexible and it and it just does anything you could want it to do really you can have stereo subs you know a lot of two channel guys they want just two full range towers in a room that's all they want in the room it's not like home theater you know where we have multiple seats and so we need multiple subs to get good base to all those seats you know there's there's one seat is all they're worried about. So it's a little bit different world than you know what we're used to in the home theater world. So for you guys, you could have stereo subs. You could have a sub for the left and a sub for the right. You could assign it all inside this flex right here using the software, they call it plugins. And for this one, you can use the HD two x four plugin. And there's also another plugin you can use for it as well. So you can use either one. I'm used to the two x four HD. I've already got it on my computer. So that's what I would use. But you can go in there and put a sub assigned to the right main and you can roll it off wherever you want. You can measure it with like a U-mic and REW to see what it looks like. You could adjust those crossover points and you can blend it perfectly, you know, and because it's a left and right sub, you can actually go well above a Hertz if you wanted to. Say you're using some bookshelves, you feel like they're distorting a little bit when you really crank it. So you can, you know, rely on that sub a little bit and raise that crossover point to, you know, get a little more headroom out of your main. So, you know, there's options like that. And also a lot of times the mains are not placed where the sub should be or the lower frequencies. You know, you may have some problems there. So maybe your sub needs to be a few feet over from where that main is. It's still close enough to call it a stereo, you know, a sub that's a attached to that main because it's still close enough to where it's still coming from that direction. But you could move that sub over a little bit and get it better placed to get a better response to the seats. So for the two channel purist guys, I mean, you could really open your system up and unleash it and you have full control over the crossover points and you know to get it aligned perfectly to the subs and just get a much better bass response in your room and of course for us home theater guys we already know you know what these can do for us because we need some way to align all the subs in our room for the multiple seats we have so we can take our delay and we can configure it in such that we get a good response at all seats. That's assuming that we properly place our seats and place our subs. We've got episodes to show you how to do that. But you know, these devices are invaluable and the money you invest in something like this can save you thousands in upgrades because most people are thinking they've got weak base because you know, their subs are at fault when it's not the subs, you know, maybe it's placement, and but it's usually always alignment is part of the problem too subs can be placed you know perfectly you can even add more subs and lose output because they're not aligned so being able to measure and being you know having a device that can align them for you it's going to save you money in the long run it's going to make you much happier and it's going to just you know it's going to sound much much better and you're getting what you pay for basically all right so enough jibber jabber let's go ahead and hook this thing up and uh, we'll go over it and i'll show you it's it really got some cool features the way it operates and like i said this is a standalone unit no longer is it going to be like the old mini dsps you know that we were hide behind the racks nobody wanted to look at so with this baby those days are over all right so we've got it plugged in here's the remote we're going to hit the power button and it's on so you can also just power it off stand by now it's off now of course you can do all this without the remote. You don't need the remote to do any of this. You can use this button. You can just push it on and off, you know, and also you can hold it down. And it tells you in the instructions, I think holding it down for three seconds was to turn Dirac on and off. And uh, let's see, there's preset one, preset two. That was just one press of it. And you can get into your presets. Um, Bluetooth, uh, there we go, toss link. So this is our inputs, all right. So we've already got Bluetooth connected to it. You see right there, it says BTNC. That means not connected. So I'm gonna turn my phone on real quick and connect to it. There we go, Mini DSP Flex. And now it says BTC, so we are now connected. So now whatever I do on my phone, you know, whatever I'm listening to, I can hear it through the Flex or you know, through the system that's connected to it. 
and we can use these buttons right here to skip forward to pause you know all that so like here's our you know our volume and this is a uh an le oled get that right an oled screen so as you see i mean it's the same from all angles it's just a really nice clean looking screen so uh it's pretty sweet um, we can connect, uh, let's see, let's go through some of these settings right here. That button, what is that? That's analog. Okay, this right here is going to, this is our inputs. I mean, we were used to that symbol, input symbol. And we've got one through four, our presets. Now, of course, in our presets, in the mini DSP plugin, you know, it's software, they call it plugins. That's how we can adjust our different um, house curves or, you know, you can do anything. You can have different crossover points, you know, if you're doing two channel with, you know your subs you know crossing over to subs i mean you can do anything inside that mini dsp it just so flexible mini dsp flex right now i didn't go over this a minute ago while well, we went over the back of it but the bluetooth antenna actually connects right there to the audio control let's see get that thing to focus there we go so so there you go that's uh that's basically it So the knob feels nice and, you know, solid, doesn't feel cheap or anything like that. So, you know, it's, it's got a metal, you know, metal case. Let's see if we can get a shot of that glass right there so you can kind of see how thick it is. See, it's, it's pretty thick. There's a finger next to it. You know, like I said, it's probably about 3 16ths of an inch of glass. So it's, you know, it's not cheap or cheesy or anything like that. You know, and all this right here is, just, you know, sheet metal. All right, so that's pretty much going to be it, you know, for the Mini DSP Flex. It's a really nice unit. Now, if you've got a HD 2x4, you just use it for subs. This may not be something you really want unless you want the display. You know, we can already get a remote for the, uh, the standard HD 2x4. But, uh, you know, for you guys that want more of a DAC, you want to be able to select, you know, uh, on the fly and see what you're, what you're doing. Because with the 2x4, it sits, or the standard ones, it sits behind the receiver or whatever you, you know it has no display you really don't know what's going on so this is going to be more of an all-in-one system or unit to where you don't need anything else you don't need a receiver you just need an amp to push your speakers and this bad boy right here to control everything for you if you want it for home theater and you really want to be able to see you know what's being read out on this but display you you like playing with presets you want to know what presets you're on and you want just more flexibility if you want to turn up your subs you know but you want to use you know preset one or preset two you can do that right here you know just hit the volume up and you're going to boost the subs it's, so it's you know very easy now if you're a two channel guy and you're looking for a new you know dac this is going to unleash your system more than anything else that you're going to get out there because of the flexibility it has you can add the subs you can tweak your response you can go to the mini dsp page for the flex unit when you go in there they actually show you or kind of go over how to do the eq with this bad boy you know, EQ your loudspeakers, how to set the target and how to load it into here and, you know, just how to play around with it and get some of the benefit out of it. Now, we still have episode seven. You can use that with this for your sub alignment with multiple subs, but there's just so much more it can do. Now, in here, of course, this little bad boy is going to be taking care of the Devastators from GSG. We've got two of those going in. Now, if you don't know anything about GSG, they make the baddest, best subwoofer kits hands down. If you want something that's going to save you money, not break the bank, but it's going to give you, you know, performance that's going to make your jaw drop, that's where you need to go. They've actually started offering more than just kits now. If you want a pre-built sub, you know, where it shows up on a pallet or on a freight truck and at your door, ready to be plugged in and rock and roll, they offer that now. Of course, there is an upcharge, but you can not only get like the Duratex or like the black standard finish, they can also do automotive base coats, maybe even veneer. I'm not sure about the veneer, but they have different finishings you can get for them. So, uh, so that's pretty awesome and something new I know they're excited about over there. So links to all this will be down in the description as well as links to the theater, you know, things we use in the theater and the Amazon links. All of those are affiliate links. So please, you know, if uh, you know, use those links in Amazon, if you're going to buy something, just help support the channel. And for Valencia Seating, if you're looking for seating, they are a sponsor of the channel. That's also an affiliate link. So when you purchase seating from them, you know, please use our link because that also helps support the channel as well. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. We've got the next one coming up. I'm fixing to shoot right after this. Now that's going to be on Atmos Myths. 
All right, guys, until next time, I'll talk to y'all later.